Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. On this week's episode, we're gonna go ahead and lift the Airstream. Remember, if you wanna learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like and a comment down below. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Now, a lot of different Airstreamers do uh, the Airstream Classic 3-inch lift for a lot of different reasons. I'm doing it for two reasons. Number one, planning in the future, I plan on putting a generator up here. There's a spare tire up there, and I, there's a little racking system, and I'm going to put a generator up there in the future. But immediately, number one, with my driveway, my slope and stuff, I need a little bit of a lift. I need a little bit more ground, ground clearance just on my own property, let alone anywhere I might be boondocking. Secondly, because of what I added in the back, that storage back there, and its placement, everything like that, it's gonna drag in some areas. So for those couple reasons, just right off the bat, I'm gonna do the Dexter axle lift. It's basically these blocks that are three inch blocks that sit in between the axle and the pre-existing mount. And I'll show you what that looks like. But first things first, we're gonna go ahead and jack this thing up, take the wheels off. Now I already went ahead and broke loose my lug nuts. So now I'm gonna go ahead and jack this up and uh, get it up on a jack stand with, and take these tires off. So let's get to it. Now, as you see on the other side, I already have my other side wheels off and jacked up. Um, on this side, I just wanted to show you guys where I'm gonna be jacking it from, right there. Okay, right at that point, point of the frame is where I'm gonna go ahead and get it jacked up from. And uh, that way it's nice and secure. You're not trying to mess up any of the body panel or anything like that. You're directly on the frame. Now I have this jacked up, the wheels are free from the ground. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of the wheel lug nuts off, take the wheels off and get it on a jack stand. So let me show you. Now I've not been around Airstreams long enough to know, I doubt it, but just in case, uh, mine came with locking lug nuts, okay? You need a special key to uh, be able to access these lug nuts, okay? In my case, it is a 41 64ths, you guys can see that, 41 64ths, six spline key. Okay, um, I'm, I'm not sure if the previous owners did this or if Airstream does this from the factory, just throwing it out there now. So now with all my lug nuts removed, I'm gonna go ahead and just take the tire right off. Tires off, moved out of the way. And as you see, I have my jack stand just sitting here waiting. I still have it up on a jack. This is just my method, um, but you, I basically have that as a safety in case this thing starts to lower, it'll only lower so much. So now I got both wheels off. I got the jack stand in place. I still have my jack on the RV. What I'm gonna do, because we're doing a three inch lift, is I'm gonna lift this thing up about another three inches so that when everything's done, I don't have to jack it up even higher to get the wheels back on. All right, here is the trailer now sitting up on jack stands on both sides. I got the jack stand right in the middle of the two axles. Hopefully that's the best balance point. I have, you know, just the front tongue jack on some stones. Now. I think the, probably the better thing to do if you have the capacity, and I probably should have done this at the beginning, is hook it up to your truck. Hook it up to your truck, put the e-brake on, that way you got a lot more stability in this front side because when I'm jacking this thing up, it was wanting to shift forward. And I had to adjust these stones a little bit to make sure that it didn't go too far forward. Um, again, I'm not on the perfectly level surface. Everyone's gonna have a different situation there, but just a tip, mount it or hook it up to your uh, truck, uh, and I bet you'll probably have a lot more stability with it. So now I'm going to work on the front axle first. Okay, obviously you can see at the back axle, axle, there's the rear of the trailer. Okay, so this front axle has two bolts, one right here, and then one right on the back side, back in there, right there. Okay, so those two bolts are what hold the axle uh, to the frame, and the same thing on the other side. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two bolts off both sides, four bolts bolts in total, so the axle can drop down. And just so you know, in case anyone's curious, these bolts are 15 sixteenths. I forgot to mention, but obviously extremely important, do not have your jack, uh, your stabilizer jacks down when you're doing the jack up procedure on the tires, okay? They need to be up because the frame's gonna twist and peak and you, you, you could easily damage that stuff. So make sure you have those up whenever you're jacking the trailer up. Now, once I have the trailer up and it's on the jack stands, I went ahead and put those um, down, those stabilizer jacks down, just to give me a little bit more stability. And I didn't feel like the RV was just rocking on literally three points, the jack stands and the front tongue jack. So now I've got all four bolts removed on the front 
axle, okay? The, the bolts behind on the rear side back there uh, were very difficult to get to. I had to use an open-ended wrench uh, and a crescent wrench, and um, it was not easy. Um, but I, I did get them all done, broke loose. There's quite a bit of rust on them. Now I have my jack set up essentially right underneath the axle so that when all the pressure drops, it would just go onto the jack. And then ideally I just lower it down a few inches, add the blocks, we're gonna go from there. However, because this is a 2012 trailer, so technically it's 11 years old, there's a lot of rust down there and it's, it's nothing corroding or anything like that. It's just these metals are just sticking together real good. So time to bust out the crowbars. So let me show you guys what I'm looking at here. Okay, so what I did was I took my crowbar, I wedged it up underneath here, and I pried it loose, and obviously now I, that actual drop down, and I can keep prying it, and it'll keep coming down, but I put the uh, jack uh, right above my head here, um, so it's holding up the weight of the axle. So now I'm going to go and lower the jack a little bit, get this down low enough to get the new block in, the new leveling, or excuse me, uh, the new lift block, man, that took some effort, um, get that in there and then i'll do the other side all right so these nuts can only go on one way they are self-locking nuts and as you can see this one on the left here has these three little indentations on it okay you can see those three indentations that is the side that goes out on this side i just did it for demonstration purposes just to show you this would be the normal side okay the flat side no indentations on it this nut right now won't go anywhere it won't tighten okay Whereas this one, the one with the indentations on it, okay, will easily thread down, okay, all the way until the end, and then what happens is it starts to get tighter and tighter and tighter, and it self-locks. Okay, so per the instructions, it's supposed to be, the bolt is supposed to be coming out from the inside, coming out, so the nut is on the outside, okay, I did that on both sides, and I just have them loosely in there, obviously, I'm going to go now to the other side, and lower the other end of the axle, put the wedge in for the lift, and get the bolts all set before I start doing anything else, okay, the, the next few steps there is to do that, and then use the jack again to create pressure up, to keep all these up against the body of the, uh, of the rig, and then start to tighten everything down. For everyone out there that is like me and has been trying to find an install video of something like this, to know how to get to these bolts back on the on the inner side of the um, axles, okay? Uh, someone on YouTube made a video where he welded little tabs on it. That's awesome. Not everyone has a welder. So I had to figure out a way to do it that everyone could do it. And for $20, you can do it too. Uh, I literally just bought a very long 15 16 open-ended wrench, and what I did was I chased it up in the inside of the frame there and got it around the bolt, and just, just enough to hold it in place, put my finger on it on the back side, I can barely touch it, start tightening from the front. Once it got nice and taut, the wrench is now wedged in there, and then you could tighten it all the way down to 150 foot-pounds of torque. Um, now... To get it out, you then need like a crowbar or something to really get in there and pry it out. But so far, so good. That's what I've been doing. It's very difficult to get to those bolts. However, it can be done, again, with an open-ended 15 16 wrench. Now, the other thing that would be a really good tool that I picked up is a 15 16 ratcheting wrench, okay? And again, I don't remember, about 20 bucks or so, but worth every penny because the bolts that are behind here, you can even see it, it's, it's literally right here. You can't see it from this angle. Um, it, you can't put a uh, socket on it. Now I could take the, the shock off and get it out of the way, but I just used the 15 16 wrench and uh, was able to loosen and tighten it that way. So again, those couple specialty tools, those 15 16 open-ended wrenches, crescent wrench, or um, ratcheting wrenches, awesome, 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 awesome. I still have some tightening to do back on this one back here, but this front one is done, it is secured, and it is tight. I'm gonna take you to the other side, and you can see, so right now these two are the same height, these are with the three inch already. You can see a lot more space above the uh, hub, but let me show you the other side that I haven't dropped yet. Look at the difference. 
Here is with the three inch lift already done, already nice and tight. And this side I have not even loosened yet. Um, and I mean, look at the difference. It says three inches, but man, it sure seems like a lot more. I can't wait to get the tires on there. But again, so this is just a good representation of how much height you can get out of these lifts. We have neared the end. I got all four brackets, um, uh, all four lift blocks in place, bolted down, 150 foot pounds of torque. Again, using those two open ended, open ended wrenches, Okay, and yeah, that cost me 20, 40 bucks, something like that. Um, but I was able to actually get to those very, very hard to reach bolts that are on the inside um, of the wheels or on the inside of the axles. Um, it's very hard to get to them, but those open-ended wrenches do work. So if you're doing this project and you're trying to find that answer without a welder, there it is. Those open-ended wrenches do work. You just gotta finagle them, get it in there and work at it from the other end. It's just, it's just a little bit of practice. And uh, by the fourth one, I was just going right through it. But now that I got these all on, uh, I do need to lift the trailer up a little bit more to get the wheels back on because the wheels uh, don't quite fit onto the hub. Uh, when I first did everything, I had thought that I lifted an extra three inches, but apparently not. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and lift up our stabilizer jacks, and then we're going to jack the RV up just one side, get these tires on, let it down, the other side, boom. So let's show you what it looks like. Now with the three inch lift completely done, you know, I just put the tires back on, tighten everything up uh, to torque specs and, you know, un unjacked everything just like we did at the beginning of the video, just in reverse. But now with them uh, done and you can see the tires are just, just, oh, I can't really focus in there, um, but barely, barely getting covered by that trim. If maybe not uh, even, even being covered by it at all. Whereas before the tires were tucked up inside that trim just, just a little bit. Um, so it definitely made a good difference in um, the overall ride height. Clearly, obviously a three inch lift, we're gonna get three inches of extra ride height. Approximately, every, everything is gonna be a little bit different. You know, tires make differences, air pressure makes differences, stuff like that, when you're trying to take that small of a measurement. Now for me, again, I needed to do this because I needed the clearance just to leave my own driveway, which it did. It worked out perfectly. Nothing drug in the back, that rear, uh, extra storage container I had, everything was nice and clean and clear. And um, I, made the adjustment on my hitch on my truck to make sure that the airstream is riding nice and level and i got that going nice and good and that's really it if you guys have any questions make sure to drop them in the comments below hit a like um, make sure to hit the subscribe button turn on the notification bell we'll see you next time thanks for watching my not rv bye